future stories to the Rishis in the assembly. So, one time happened the thing that the Rumpad was religious, but somehow he did some irreligious deed. Because of this irreligious act, some calamity, natural calamity came to his kingdom. Like it was not raining, or if it rained, it was like a flood. By the flood, all the crops were destroyed. Some crop at Lavur. So also sometimes there's also complete dry drought, like not not raining at all, you know. And this moment, this Rompad, the king. He took Stringy Muni, made the first sacrifice in his kingdom. And when this Sangirishi came to his kingdom at the same time, the calamity, natural calamity stopped. Like started raining and he got all the everything back to good terms. Everything was good again. So Samantha is telling to Dasharat Maharaj in the same way. If you make the sacrifice sacrifice with this Sangirishi, very certain you'll get some who was Sringi? He was the son of Bibandhak. Ronke, she said this name. He was the son of Bibandhak. Sringi was the son of Bibandhak. He used to live in a jungle that he would not see no woman in this, no women in this jungle. Only the son and father used to live in this jungle. Even the animals, the, the birds, they were also not mating in the forest. So, Sengiri, she did they even know what is the sex life? You know what is Milan, no? What I'm saying? So like this sexual affair, she didn't even know about this sexual, like anything about the nature of this thing, nothing. So if somebody went there trying to get him as a husband, the father would uh, curse this woman to become a stone or a tree. That's why nobody used to go to that forest. Nobody would go. That's why. Risha Singha. Risha Singha. Risha Singha. He used to stay as like a brahmachari, following brahmachari. So how did they bring him to the kingdom of Rumpan? So they put some prostitutes there, they sent some prostitutes in that forest. At that time, the Bibanda Grishi, the, the father was not there, but somehow the father was not there at that moment. Only this Risha Singha was there alone in the forest. And all those ladies, they're showing many hav and bhav, many like moods, and it's a long story. And then they like captivated him. And then he was brought to the Rompad kingdom. When he came to the kingdom of Rompad, it started raining. Who is telling this kata? Sumanta is telling to the Sharat Maharaj the Kata that Chatusan told to the Brahmanas. When the same Kata, some assembly, the Rishis also again told the story again. Come on. So, so he is your son in law. How is this your son in law? What? The son of Rompad. Was some the daughter of Rompad was Santar, and Santar got married to the Rishi Singha. So this is like the son-in-law of the Sharat Maharaj, right? Because Santar was his daughter. So Sumantara told the Sharat Maharaj, the Singha Rishi, Rishi Singha, he must do the five sacrifice for you to get a son. And then they did the first sacrifice, and the Jaga Purush manifested. We do the first sacrifice, but I still haven't seen the Jaga Purush manifest in the end. Maharaj probably saw the Jaga Purush. I never saw one of the first sacrifice. 
Maharaj is saying, I don't even do five sacrifices. Like, yeah, Jaga Purush is at the end of the five sacrifices. Um, entity manifests and like give you the fruit of the five sacrifices. You, you, Sata Prabhu is making the five sacrifices for Maharaj. That's why you too. It's like a Purush, like a personality coming the end of five sacrifice, giving you the fruit of the. So from that five sacrifice, the Jagat Purusha manifested. And then when Jagat Purusha manifested, he brought a plate with some kheer, a sweet rice. And then he gave this sweet rice to Dasharat Maharaj. And then Maharaj Dasharat, he took this kheer and. He took this kid and he gave half. Where is Narasim? Shila Narasim Maharaj? In Bengal, there's a word. Maybe you don't know what is the meaning. Firwala Kadosh. In Bengal, there's very bad words. So Maharaj was cutting the potato to show Sunasi Maharaj and then later he took so there's a sorry didn't get so it's very clear so it's the same but it's saying a little bit complicated maybe you don't understand People in Hindi who speak Hindi, they understand no problem. I'm not against. It's okay, very nice. What did Valky Meraman explain very clearly? Mahajda Sharat, what did he do? He took the kid and half of the kid gave to Kaushalya. And the other half, which was left, he also shared in two parts again. And this one part, he's always saying the opposite, Shamprabhu. He's not listening. Listen, then you listen. We're not listening. It's written in the forehead. <laughs> do, I did so many days, but in sudden, you think I don't know? Only by seeing your forehead, I know who's. Just by looking, I know who is listening. Just by see, with my eyes, I can see. That I don't even see who is who is who is sitting because if I see I, I know who is listening or not so I don't even look. I will see that I will see that the person is doing a parade and is not listening Maharikata. So why? Uh, so I lose my time lose my time if I like just uh, the person. So I just like put my mind in Bhagavan and just open my eyes but actually not listen. Not, sorry, I'm not looking actually. But if how much a person listens or not, how much a person is listening or not, is written in your eyes, in your foreheads of everyone here sitting. It's written in your foreheads and eyes. It's written or not. Just by seeing your eyes, I know how much Harinam you're chanting. Just by seeing your eyes. Those who chant holy names, they say, oh, I chant three, three lakhs Harinam. Just by looking your eyes, I know how much Harinam you're chanting. You cannot hide. It's true. The more, the, as much as I you chant, I can look at you and know just by looking at you. Understand? And also, don't chant Harinam, no problem. And also, the chant, also, what I have to anything to do with that, those who are chanting. Those who want desire to listen, they will listen. Those who try to understand, back to the same thing, explain very clearly. If you have a little bit of shrad or a little bit of ruchi, you'll be able to even understand this complicated book as such as Bhaktira Samta Sindhu. It's written, you can ask Maharaj. 
I'll show to you. In the Maktaram Santa Singh, Chandra Prabhupada he wrote, Look, in Bhakti Santa Singh is a very complicated book. But, how to understand this complicated book? If you have a little bit of Shraddha, faith, and Ruchi, you taste, you'll be able to understand. If you, you're simple, you'll be able to understand the conceptions of Mahaprabhu. It's also the same as the conception of Mahaprabhu, how to understand. If you're simple, then you understand Mahaprabhu's conception. If not, then know what to do. This is direct, I say. You cannot cheat me. You cannot cheat me. If you stay in the school or not, or those who are listening, very good. But maybe you not understand, then you can ask me, Maharaj, I didn't understand. You told, but I do not understand. You have, you will make question. This is like Parikit Maharaj. Actually, Parikit Maharaj, he, he didn't have any questions. The questions are from other people, but Parikit Maharaj, he asked on the behalf of other people. Because you have to make the questions. Tadvidi Pandipatiana Pariprasna. Tadvidi means if you want to know about God. Tadvidi means to know about God. You have to follow three rules. Pranipat, Pariprishna and Siva. Pariprishna, when you make questions, then you will understand that the person is listening. Maybe you make some like a um, opposite question, like crazy question a little bit. Like we don't know how to make questions. Maharaj, please forgive me. Maybe I'm doing some slip of tongue or like some mistake here or offense. If I have some fault in my question, please, I have a question, please answer to me. And then the saint will be happy and will answer to you. Those who really listen, they will certainly have questions. Because you are not Trikalagya. You understand everything. You don't know past, present, and future. Do you understand everything? Brahma and even great demigods don't understand. How do you think you will understand? So, of course, you have some questions, surely. After listening, questions will come in your heart. But if your questions didn't come in your heart, means you should understand that you didn't listen properly. Gurudeva, you know the Shamarandidi. Gurudeva, she made so many questions. She always did questions. That Gurudeva used to call her question Rani instead of Shamarani. Because she used to listen. That's why he was, she was thinking and trying to understand and like this. That's why she had many questions. If not, then whatever came, went, like you're not uh, concerned. Like whatever. So from morning until now, it's still saying the same thing about the Ramayana. Dasharat Maharaj. Okay, I'll, I'll stop soon. Maharaj will speak. So Dasharat Maharaj took 50% of the sweet rice and gave to Kaushalya. The, the rest 50% he shared, divided in two parts. So he gave half of this to Sumitra. So Sumitra got 25 of the whole, 25 from 100%. So one fourth Sumitra got. And now how much left? More 25%, more one fourth left. So he also shared this in one in half also, in two parts. And gave one of these parts to KK. So KK got 12.5%. And this other rest, 20, how much left? 12.5%. He gave to? He gave to who? To KK or to Koshal? He gave to Sumitra. So according to Valmiki Ramayana, we are discussing you know, it. It's mathematics. You have to know some mathematics for this. Valmiki Ramayana explains very clearly. So Koshal got Koshal got fifty percent. And then 50%. Sumitra got 37.5%. 37.5%. Kai got 12.5%. You passed in the test of mathematics or not? Yes. You got all the maths, very simple, all the mathematics. But also, so why Sumitra had two sons? It's written in Valmiki Ramayana. Is it written? No. People say because she got two parts of Kir. He, he's saying, I can like conclude. But Buddha is saying, con your own conclusion, like an Omanbe, inference is not evidence.
If what you're saying is okay, your words are very. I'm ready to believe it. I'm not denying that you can conclude yourself that she had two sons because she got two parts of kids. But I have to say, what is in the Shasta? The Shasta is not saying why she got exactly two sons. <coughs> in the last word that I'm saying. So the three do, uh, queens were gar, uh, pregnant at the same time. So Prashalya got the son Ramchandra and Sumitra had two sons, Lakshman and Shatrugna. And KK had Bharat. Like this, it describes very beautiful. Later, we'll listen to Maharikata. <laughs> Maharaj will describe who came like Vishnu, who came like this. How Sai Bhagavan Vishnu, he came in four forms. Maharaj will describe this. He will tell this Harikata. How one Bhagavan Vishnu, he manifests in four forms. So you also must know how Lord is one manifesting four forms. So, today we are going to discuss about Ramachandra. <laughs> now is the lockdown. We have time. Later we will talk this question. This Siddhanta is very important. Which one? How Vishnu manifests in four forms like Ram, Lakshman, Bharat, and Shatrugna. Who, which one was which Amsha and what they used to say? Do you remember this Guru they used to speak? Ramananda Prabhu. So tell me. Who, which Anga was like Bharata was who of Vishnu? Maharaj will speak. Maharaj knows everything. <laughs> 